Hello, welcome to Theosophy in Wales. I'm Dave Marsland. David Charm. Well, David Charm is a state of bliss which occurs between incarnations or between lives. Um, it's the closest thing that Theosophy has to heaven. But it is, however, a state, not a place. Now, when, you're, when you reach David Charn, and it, it's difficult to refer to it always as a, a state, but um, when you reach it, um, all of your spiritual aspirations during Earth life uh, will be realised and explored. And if you have a lot um, to work with, then uh, you will make spiritual progress while you're there. Now, it isn't a place like um, heaven or the fields of Elysium in Virgil's Iniad. Um, but it does correspond to the three highest levels of the mental plane, or the three highest levels of mind. Uh, so, in that sense, you could find um, a location for it if, in terms of um, the planes of nature and the, the constitution of man. Now, with David Charn, um, you don't just show up there. It's not like you die and arrive in heaven. There's, there's a bit of a journey to go through, and some people have quite a big journey to make. Now, upon physical death, you go into the spirit realm, or desire realm, known as karma loka. There are seven levels of this, going from the, the densest at the bottom to the finest at the top. The lowest level of karma loka um, would be the equivalent to hell. Uh, not a particularly good place uh, to end up um, and the top level is actually not a bad place to be. Um, however, none of this is eternal, the, even if you end up at the lowest level, which unlikely most of us ever will, I mean, most of us will, um, but you, you do move through it. It's, it's not like uh, eternal damnation, you, you move beyond it. See? Now, once you're in Karma Loka, the your desire principle dissolves away. Now, the desire principle um, com is combined with the lower levels of mind um, and that forms the personality ego, the personality. Um, now, as the desire principle dissolves away, um, so, so the sections of the mind that combine with the desire principle become redundant and form a shell which eventually will dissolve away, but in any case you, you don't take it with you beyond Karma Loka. Now, um, one of the problems with the journey through Karma Loka is it can be a long and difficult one if you have a lot of attachments, um, material attachments to earth life, uh, material ambition and anger and resentment. And so it's taking anger and resentment or, or even ambition. Um, if you have trouble letting, say, the, um, amb anger, resentment, ambition um, go, letting go of it while you're alive, then it really isn't going to be easier once you're dead. And this is something that will hold you back and can make the journey through um, Karma Loka very difficult. In fact, most religions say, uh, let it go. and. Um, also, many religions say, well, don't put everything into um, sort of like um, material ambition, material possessions, and that sort of thing. Um, so, although karma loka is not probably not mentioned in religion, or, or even the concept of it isn't there, um, you have this advice to let go of things, and in a way that is um, preparing you. Um, for the uh, uh, after death states at which you, you lose everything and you basically have to uh, come to terms with losing everything. But I think with anger and resentment that probably is the difficult one that will hold a lot of people back because it's very very hard to let go very often and if you take it with you it'll still be hard to let go. Um, okay, having, having done that, so you um, gone through Karma Loka. A very spiritual person will probably rise straight through it with not much trouble. But um, okay, you go through it and you reach the second death. Now, in the second death, um, you form what is really the, the reincarnating ego, which is the higher essence 
of mind, high, higher elements of mind, the ones influenced by the buddhic principle, the, the body of enlightenment. But he said, higher elements of mind, the buddhic principle, and the atma, which is the piece of the divine in everybody, the divine spark in everybody, um, from the reincarnating ego, and goes into, that goes into David Chan. Now, David Chan has two phases, um, Rupa and Arupa. Uh, Rupa is form, and, um, or with form, and Arupa is without form. I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. Now, you get to David Chan. Now, it's a rather unusual situation, difficult to, to, to imagine. You've, your personality has dissolved. But because the higher element of mind is still there, or it's the three higher elements of mind, levels of mind are still there, you still have your identity from earth life, but you don't have your personality. Anyway, it's a state of bliss in which spiritual aspirations are realised and explored, and in which, if you have enough to, to, to work with, um, you're, uh, you will make some spiritual progress there. Um, also, um, you will be surrounded by friends and relatives, and everybody will be excellent to each other, because your desire principle has gone, so it's impossible to have a negative thought. So everything, anything, everything comes from the body of enlightenment. You, it's at the higher level, there's, there's no negativity. Also, uh, with your um, uh, friends and relatives, they're not really there, it's, it's, a, more of a virtu it's a virtual world, although it will seem very real to you. Um, and um, no, it's um, something that allows you to assimilate the, the experience or the, the higher experiences and, and aspirations of your life and um, if the more the more spiritual you are, the more spiritual you have been during Earth life, the more you will have to work with. As there are various levels of David Chan um, corresponding to your level of spirituality, but um, everybody everybody experiences David Chan. Now, um, your your experience a state of bliss, and you still can know who you are from in terms of your past Earth life. That sadly um, comes to an end. And you enter the Arupa phase. It's not a bad thing, but you, your bliss uh, exhausts itself, and you go to the Arupa f um, phase. Now, that really involves only the very highest level of mind, uh, in conjunction with the uh, body of enlightenment. Uh, you lose at that point um, your um, Earth previous life identity. So you, you've lost that. You, you're now uh, ready to take on uh, a new identity and a new life. And from this, you make preparations to go back into incarnation, into your next life, and you choose the, the best life available, and that means the circumstances of your birth, the sort of person you, you'll be, um, and uh, generally have an agenda, develop an agenda for what you need to learn. Things will happen in that life. Um, there will be certain situations and the circumstances of birth will give you something to deal with. Um, um, your physical body may be, um, maybe you, you may have advantages, disadvantages, de depending on what you need to learn. So that's that's it really. You've completed the cycle and you're you're back into um, you're you're back into incarnation.